yes, I have travelled a long way, but my intention was I wanted to come to the Winslow Hotel because that's where my granddad drank. It's a very special occasion for her and, and I really appreciate what she's doing for my grandfather. It's surreal, you know, thinking all that sticks to Dean's granddaughter and his grandson was here. You know, again, it's a bit starstruck. Tell us about being Dixie's granddaughter, what was it like? Well, Dad used to have hotels and whenever Grandad came to visit, it was just jam-packed, jam absolutely jam-packed. And, and at an early stage, I always wondered, like, maybe Dad's just busy. And then as I got older, I realised Grandad's getting in my way because <laughs> all these people are here to see him and not me. <laughs> It's nice to know about the family man, you know, her relationship with her grandfather and him with his granddaughter. You know, and it's like, you know, he's such an icon. This is a sporting legend, you know, and it's a world legend. That's when I was in school, because um, I was doing a production and I was, uh, I think I was 15. Oh, look, I knew he was something to do with football at that stage, but I didn't know the enormity of it. I went to lunch in the production clothes and the headmaster came into the cafeteria in school and they were getting rid of all the kids that were in the clothing of the production. But I was the only one that got, that Dean girl, that Dixie Dean girl, get out. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to get you back, Grandad. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, so embarrassed. I thought, well, maybe this is not good being related to you. <laughs> Everybody here knows a lot of um, Grandad's um, story, history, statistics and so forth, but just putting a personal touch when we were growing up as children and what we used to do and play around and you know just have some fun and some of the stories and some of the wonderful times that we shared with him. When we had the pubs he also used to like to join in with like the darts when he, when he had his dates, Did he? Yeah. you know the darts and quakes and things like that, he was always good at everything. You know? talk about when he had the pub in Chester, Dixie, um, a guy came in and said he was the middleweight champion of Mayo and one night a little, um, a little fight broke out and Dixie laid him out and he said now I am the middleweight champion of Mayo. <laughs> I knew he was famous, he scored all them goals in the season, he's never been bent because he used to tell me he'd love to see his record being beaten. My father was the number one number one fan of his own father. You know, my father got to become the school, he was playing with the school team and made the school captain, but my dad said that's when he gave away. I remember asking him, well, why didn't you follow after him? And he said, no. He said, I would have been booed because I could not follow in his footsteps. He said that what, what he did was just an act of God, what he did. He will be, has been, and always will be, the best centre forward. My grandfather, he, he's in every book that you read just about with sport, and everybody knows, you know, his, his history, but to be able to have a little insight into the family, uh, and that's what I'm here to offer, and it's just been lovely, and, and it's been heartwarming. Living as, you know, as a scouser myself, this little story about someone in our little corner of the world and what's important that is. It's nice to put, you know, meet and get some extra stories that we obviously some of us have never heard before. So it's good, yeah. It's nice, it's nice. nice. It's been an amazing evening, absolutely amazing. I couldn't have wished for it to be better, and it's been an absolute knockout. Thank you.